welcome students for today's lecture on uh, design of a valid plate girdle so uh, let us see what all we have done uh, till now so this is the given data and we have uh, computed uh, the design force wherein it worked out to be uh, after computing the penny moment it worked out to be 11.448 kN meter and maximum shear force 1908 kN for the given load then we did the first step that is design of web herein we have uh, designed the cross sections for it and we came across the plate of 1800 by 12 mm size then second we designed the flanges and according to the conditions we took 560 by 50 mm flange plate then the classification of section was done and we came to know that the, the section was uh, plastic here then we checked for uh, bending strength so in bending strength uh, which was safe as we got the value of 11772.7 kN meter which is greater than the computed bending 11448 kN meter then we computed the shear capacity of the web so here in uh, we computed the shear capacity of the web and we got as 962.28 but uh, our calculated shear for due to the loading was 1908 and hence we needed to revise so in revision what we have to do we cannot increase uh, the depth of the section so we increase the width of the thickness that is web thickness so we revise the web thickness from 12 mm to 16 mm and again computed the shear capacity so here in we worked out and we got the shear capacity as 2214.7 kN which was greater than 1908 kN so this was done in the previous classes now let us uh, see the further part so the next is check for uh, lateral torsional uh, buckling so as you can see since the compression flange of the girder is laterally restrained throughout the possibility of lateral torsional buckling is not there and the check is not required so here you can uh, see that as a compression flange girder that is a compression flange is the top flange which is restrained already given in the uh, question so no need to check for torsion so let us see next so flange to web connection that is how we are going to connect the flange to the web which is given in clause number 8.6.3.3 so let us uh, uh, see what we get uh, there 8.6.3.3 so let us go to that uh, uh, clause number so going through the IS 800 uh, 2007 and to the clause number 8.6.3.3 so these are the section so 8.6.3.3 so here you can see connection of flanges to web so let us see the flanges of the plate girder shall be connected to the web by sufficient rivets, bolts or welds to transmit the maximum horizontal shear force resulting from the bending movement gradient in the girder combined with any vertical loads which are directly applied to the flange. If the web is designed using tension field method as in 8.4.2.2b, the weld should be able to transfer the tension field stress FIW acting on the web. So uh, this uh, method we have used simple post critical method not the tension field method so this won't be applicable here. Now in this we have to design uh, the uh, plate gutter such that design the flanges such that the sufficient rivets bolts and webs are to be provided such that it takes the maximum horizontal shear force resulting from the bending movement gradient so the main component here is the maximum horizontal shearing force from the bending moment in the gradient in combined with the vertical loads which are directly applied to the front. so this is the most important so let us see so we compute here so qw is the strength of the web so v a f y bar divided by 2 i z so i z is a cal calculated with respect to the web so what we do we consider the full section that is breadth of the flange uh, total uh, depth cube divided by 12 and we minus the flange portion so uh, bf minus tw d cube by 12 so this is the whole section and this is the deducted part of the flange portion which is coming into picture 
so this is the breadth of the flange 560 total depth is 1900 1900 cube divided by 12 minus 560 minus the thickness of web which comes at the junction 16 1800 cube by 12 just i will show you in the diagrammatic uh, form so if i take this as a cross section uh, as a i section so what happens is here just uh, we'll go through the diagram form okay suppose if this is a i section so uh, we are taking the contribution of the flanges such that uh, so in the first we took uh, b f into d cube that is total depth not this depth. this is just the web so when we take minus we are deducting so much part so here total width is 560 and we are deducting this thickness of it that is the meaning of it so here after substituting we get 55702.6 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 then qw will calculate so we got i said so shear force we already know 1908 then uh, area of the flange so area of the flange is 560 by 50 into y bar so it is a 900 that is half section plus 50 by 2 divided by 2 into i z so we substitute here we are getting it as 0.4436 kilo newton per mm so let us provide a weld of size s is equal to 6 mm so ks is equal to 0.7 into 6 mm which is 4.2 mm the strength of a shock weld per unit length fwd is equal to 4.2 into 250 into 10 raised to minus 3 divided by root 3 1 into 1.5 this formula is nothing but the same as what we used to use so kl about root 3 gamma mw so this is the formula and uh, this is fy here and this is ks 4.2 so substituting we are getting it as 0.485 kilo newton per mm so 0.485 which is uh, greater than this 0.4436 kilo newton per mm so next uh, let us uh, check the design of uh, end bearing stiffener so let us uh, go through the code book uh, pro provision in the end bearing uh, uh, stiffener so again we will go to the clause numbers here so design of uh, end bearing uh, stiffeners here we will get so let us see so end bearing stiffener the local capacity of the web is given by fw is equal to b1 plus n2 into tw into fiw upon gamma m0 which is given in the clause number 8.7.4 let us see what it is so 8.7.4 is nothing but a bearing stiffener design so we are designing the end bearings hence end bearing stiffener so the bearing stiffener should be provided for webs where force is applied through a flange by loads or reaction exceeding the local capacity of the web as its connection to the flange fw is given by so fw is equal to b1 plus n2 into tw into fiw divided by gamma m0 where b1 is nothing but stiff bearing length so they are given what to refer so refer 8.7.1.3 n2 is nothing the length obtained by the dispersion through the flanges to the web junction at a slope of 1 is to 2.5 to the plane of the flange then tw is the thickness of web fiw is yield stress of the web now if you see the figure 8.7.1.3 you can see it here so from 8.7.1.3 this is how the stiff bearing length is calculated the stiff bearing length of any element bf is the length which cannot deform appreciably in bending to determine uh, the uh, b the dispersion of the load through steel bracing element should be taken at 45 degrees through the solid material such as uh, bearing plates and flange plate etc see figure number 15 so this is figure number 15 steel bearing length so this is how the connection goes and this is at angle of 45 degrees so b1 is nothing but the distance from this place to this place so hope so we get it so now according to the clause we have to compute the steep bearing length according to the 45 percent 45 degrees dispersion and with the slope of 1 is to 2 part so let us see how we apply so steep bearing length b1 is taken as 125 mm then 
n2 how it came 125 means we have width of 250 so we have taken half of it so 125 mm. then n2 which has to be computed for the which has to be computed uh, for uh, the uh, 2.5 1 is to 2.5 slope so if you see the diagram 50 mm is the width of the uh, that is the depth of the flange so 50 is the depth of the flange into 1 is to 2.5 so into 2.5 so 125 mm. So we got uh, the bearing length, steel bearing length 125 mm and N2 as 125. So substituting. So 125 plus 125 here. Thickness of web 16 mm into 250 divided by 1.1 into 10 raised to minus 3. So we got it as 909.09 kilonewton, which is less than 1908 kilonewton. So here what they are given, hence a stiffener will be required. So re remember always uh, uh, if this value is greater than the shear force VU, then the stiff bearing length is not required. Now this is this 1908 kN is the shear force of the uh, computed parameter. So here we have to take into consideration. So here we have to, uh, now what is happening here is the shear force on the plate cutter is 1908 and you can clearly see here that 909.09 .09 kilonewton is the stiff bearing which can it sustain but it has to take a 1908 hence uh, we have to provide stiffener uh, please uh, students don't write here it is uh, hence safe or hence okay no it is uh, not like that here in what is happening is we are having a lesser value of the stiff bearing length fw than the shear force but we have to resist 1908 kN as per the clause hence we have to increase it so we require the stiff bearing length suppose if this value was 2000 then and here 1908 then it will register automatically hence we need not to design the stiffener so remember always when fw is less than a shear force then we have to provide stiffness and if fw is greater than shear force then we need not to provide the stiffness now according to the values we came that fw is less than the shear force vu hence the stiffener will be required now how to design the stiffener let us see so maximum reaction we will take we have to design it for 1908 kN okay so let us try with two flat section as stiffener one on each side of the web so let us uh, provide according to that so the maximum width of the flat that can be accommodated now this i will explain you from the diagram now here if you see the i our uh, i section so let us go to the i section here so this is I section, so this is the width, so that 560 is nothing but this width was 560 minus the thickness. So what will happen and divided by 2, so 560 minus 16 divided by 2, that is the breadth of the flange B of minus TW divided by 2, 272 mm. So maximum what I can get here, the outstand that is B is 272 mm. So I cannot go beyond it. Okay. So let us provide a 16 mm thick flat section. So whatever is the thickness of the web, we will provide the same thickness uh, stiffener. So here we have to go to the clause 8.7.1.2. So let us go to that clause 8.7.1.2. Uh, wherein uh, we will uh, come to uh, know uh, what is the maximum and minimum dimension that can be provided for the stiffener. So going to 8.7.1.2 here, so outstand of the web stiffener. So let us see, unless the outer edge is continuously stiffened, the outstand from the face of the web should not exceed 20 TK epsilon. When the outstand of the web is in between 14 TK epsilon and 20 TK epsilon, then the stiffener should be designed on the basis of cross section with outstand of 14 TK epsilon where TQ is the stiffness, thickness of the stiffener. Now what we have done, we have taken the thickness of the stiffener as 16 mm, so this is TQ. So let us calculate the 20 TK epsilon and 40 TK epsilon. So maximum permissible outstand is 20 TK epsilon where 20 into 16 and epsilon is 1 which is 320 mm. So this here you can see in the clause. 20 TK epsilon and 14 TK epsilon. So let us check. And maximum effective outstand is 14 TK epsilon, which is 14 into 16 into 1, which is 224 mm. 
so maximum is 320 minimum is 224 but we can go up to 272 so what we can see this is in between this hence we have to go with maximum of 272 only <clears throat> so let let us uh, go with 224 initial so let us try a flat section of 16 mm by 224 mm so 16 mm width and uh, the the depth of 224 mm so this according to the uh, clause we can uh, go uh, further here so it can be the thickness of the stiffener can be taken as uh, 20 uh, 20 tw so here it is 20 tw and here it is 20 tw so 20 into 16 okay 320 m 320 m which will cover the area so let us see so check for buckling uh, of the stiffener the effective area of the stiffener so let us see so how many stiffener are there here two one over here and one over here. This is the web. So this is one area that is 16 to 224, and this is the another area 16 to 224. That's why this two is the number, and this is the area because there are two elements. Then plus two into 20 TW into 16 it is. So two into 20 TW that is two because we have two sections here, one here and one here. So this is two again and 20 TW, 20 TW. So 2 into 20 TW, so 20 into 16 into the thickness of the web 16. So the effective area is working out to be 17408 mm square. Then compute the uh, moment of inertia of the stiffener. So it will be 2 because we have two stiffeners. Then we have 16 uh, BD cube by 12, so 16 into 224 cube by 12 plus area 16 into 224 into 224 by 2 plus 16 by 2 the whole square, a square. So this is IZ working out. So radius of variation R is root of IX by A, which is 13319.1 into 10 raised to 4 divided by 17408. This is IX. So we got it as 87.47 uh, uh, mm. So the slenderness uh, ratio, which can be uh, uh, seen, lambda is equal to 0 0.7 into 1800 divided by 87.47. Uh, 47 which is 14.41 so for lambda is equal to 14.41 and fi is equal to 250 newton per m square and buckling curve c the design compressive stress so this fcd is calculated from the table number 9 here 9 seat so let us go to the table number uh, 9 uh, c so therein you will come across uh, uh, this is 13 so let us go to the table number 9C of the uh, IS code. So this is uh, the table number 8A. So here only. Let us go further. So here, uh -huh, okay. So here is uh, table number 13B. So we will go to the table number uh, 9C wherein will come across uh, the design compressive stress why 9c because our uh, section is plastic our section is uh, plastic and this is for uh, buckling class so, so so we have a lambda value of 14.41 and 250 so it is in between 224 to 227 so let us see here. so after uh, taking in between 224 to 227 so after interpolating we got the value as 220 5.67 newton per m square now let us see the buckling resistance which is nothing but pd into a into fcd so fcd is this value and area we have computed here 17408 so 17408 into 225.67 into 10 to minus 3 which are out to be 3928.46 kilonewton so greater than 1908 kilonewton hence it is taking hence the stiffener can be provided of 224 by 62 but remember here, suppose if uh, this is minimum, we should start with minimum. Suppose if it cross 272, because the available length is 272 only, I cannot provide with 320, because the width available is 272 maximum. So uh, it is in between 224 to 272. So we are provided with 224 and we got safe. Hence, we can provide the stiff. Now, let us check uh, the bearing capacity of the 
uh, stiffener. So width available for bearing is 224 minus 15 that is 209 mm. So bearing uh, strength of the stiffener is given by Fp is equal to AQFYQ divided by gamma m0. It is nothing but AGFI upon gamma m0 which is used uh, for the cross area of the section in tension member. So we have used Q because of the stiffeners. So Q represents, AQ represents area of the stiffener. FI is Q is nothing but the yield stress of the stiffener, which should be greater than equal to FC minus FW. So area of the stiffener in contact with the flange is 2 into 209 into 16 mm, which is 6688 uh, mm square. Then FC minus FW, so FC is 1908 and this is 1909. So difference is 998.91 kilonewton. So FPSG is nothing but this uh, we have to substitute here. So area is uh, 6688 and uh, FI 220 10 to minus 6, so 1.1, which should be equal to this component 0.8 gamma m0 according to the clause of 8.7.5.8. So let us uh, go uh, to that uh, clause number 8.7.5.8. <coughs> So here you can see that uh, uh, 8.7. Okay, uh, 5. Point, uh, here, here you can get. So FPSD is equal to AQFYQ divided by pointed gamma m not greater than equal to FX. So FX is the external load or reaction area of the stiffener in contact with the flange, and FYQ is yield stress of the stiffener. So here you can see. So computed we got uh, 1520, which is greater than the difference 998.99. Hence is here. Now next uh, we shall go for check for torsional resistance provided by the end bearing stiffener. So end of the plates must have sufficient torsional resistance for the transportation and erection of viewpoint. So we have to compute the second moment of inertia or moment of inertia of end bearing stiffener at the support. This is again according to the clause here. So uh, torsional uh, resistance, this is here it is not mentioned. So it is according to the clause number 8.7.9. So you can see here where the bearing stiffeners are required to provide torsional restraint at the support of the beam, they should meet the following. So condition 8.7.4, which is already checked. So this is bearing stiffener. And second, second moment of inertia of the area. So IS is equal to greater than equal to 0.34 alpha S T cube TCF where alpha S is equal to 0 0.006 for LLT by R by less than equal to 50 and this value if it is in between 50 and 100 and greater than 100 this value. So D is the total overall depth of the beam. TCF is maximum thickness of the compression flange in the span under consideration. KL is laterally supported effective length and R Y is the radius of gyration of the beam. So let us see. So this is the formula which is given on the page. So I Y, I Y has to be calculated. So 2 into thickness of flange into breadth of flange by divided by 12 cube plus D T W divided by 12. So we substitute, we got it as 1464.08 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4. So the area we will calculate, so 2 into 560 into F, this is for the width of the flange and this is uh, 1800 into 16, so this is 84800 mm square. Radius of correction I by A, so substituting we got 131.40. Now the slenderness ratio, this is given by LLT by R by. So length is 24 meters divided by radius of correction, so 24 into 10 raised to 3A. So this becomes mm divided by 131.40, so it is 1. 82.65. Now what is happening? Let us see in the code book. So LLT by RY is greater than 100. Hence we have to use alpha S is equal to 30 divided by LLT divided by RY square. So that has been taken. So 30 divided by LLT divided by RY the square. So we got 8.99 to 10 raised to minus 4 here. So IS provided is 0.34 alpha S T cube TCS. So 0.34 into 8.99 into 10 raised to minus 4. D is 1800 plus 2 into 50 cube into 50. So 104.82 into 10 raised to 6. As provided, let us see. So 16 into uh, stiffener. So 16 into 2 into 224 cube by 12. Or you can write separately also. That is 16 into 224 cube by 12 plus 16 into 224 cube by 12. So this is working out to be. 119.89 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4, which is greater than 104. Hence, it is safe. Now, the last component, let us see. 
and bearing stiffness correction as per 8.7.10 let us see so connection to the web of load carrying and uh, bearing stiffener the stiffener which uh, resist loads or reaction applied through a flange should be connected to the web by sufficient weld or fasteners to transmit a design force equal to the lesser equal or lesser of tension capacity of the stiffener and some of the forces applied at the two ends of the stiffener when they act in the same direction or larger of the forces when they act in opposite direction so this is how so let us find out tension capacity of one plate tdn is equal to point an f divided by gamma m this is uh, from for the plates uh, tension uh, for the the where you can see in the tension maker this is the formula so 0.9 area is 209 into 16 that is this is of the uh, uh, provided flats uh, as a stiffener into 410 because it is a plate it is 410 You are by 1.25 into 10 raised to minus 3. So TDN is working to be 987.15. So we got the first component tension capacity of the stiffener. Now let us find the second component. So shear per unit length Q1 is equal to 987.15 divided by 2 into 800 minus 2 into 15. So which is 0.276 kilonewton per mm. Let us provide a weld size of 5 mm. So 0.7 is 3.5 mm. So FWD one three point five into two fifty divided by root three into one point five into ten raised to minus three, which is also going to be point four zero four kilonewton per mm, which is greater than point two seven six kilonewton per meter. Hence, we can provide. So hence, provide a uh, five mm fillet well to connect the end bearing stiffener with the web plate. So this uh, completes the design uh, here. So uh, we can uh, uh, say that we have designed the design of plate cutter. This is without the intermediate stiffener so all are required uh, to study and shortly we will get the assignment so and uh, for the diagram that is the plan and the cross section you can refer the code book in the code book they have clearly given the diagram so the cross section at least is the i section of three plates so uh, it is as shown in the figure so i just let you know here so in the cross sections you can see so we have i section three plates and the uh, design uh, according to the and this is the plan so this is the end bearing so this is a half plan you can go with the other plan so in between spacing is nothing but the panel so we are not designing with the tension so we are only designing uh, with simple post critical so this is uh, the plan we wear you can see So here you can see there are three diagrams. So this is uh, with uh, using the tension field. So leave it. So this we would be using. We will be using these two. Now here it is with one with the end post and one with the without the end post. So we have to go with this. So we have end post, end bearing stiffener, and the pan. So this is how the design uh, component uh, goes with. So. This completes the design of plate cutter. In the next class, we will see the design of plate cutter with intermediate stiffness. Stiffness. So, thank you. We will see you in the next class.